Mm -hmm. Hi, Carl here for Pro VTV. I'm joined once again by Greg from Sonnet. So, what are we looking at here? What are these? These are external GPU expansion products. Okay. We call this the EGFX Breakaway Box mm -hmm. 350, and we have another model that's 550. 350 for the size of the power supply and 550. Gotcha. This is the EGFX Breakaway Puck. It's got a GPU card built into it, and it has all of the uh, ports that a typical graphic card would have and a Thunderbolt port. So these are all connectable over Thunderbolt 3. This particular product has an AMD uh, RX 580 uh, GPU in it. Mm -hmm. We have another model that has an RX 560. It's particularly nice because it's so portable. So simply put, this is a big one for interchangeable cards, so you can put, put in whatever card you want as long as it's Thunderbolt 3 compatible. And this one is a small portable, portable one which has got one fixed card inside it, exactly. which you're stuck with, but it means you get a smaller package, which means you can just plug and play simply. Yes, yeah? exactly. Okay, so there's also another range, isn't there? there? There's ranges for different types of cards going smaller and bigger and that sort of stuff. Do we want to just explain where sure. this sits? Yeah, so, this, so this, these products are recently introduced mm -hmm. and they, because the ability to support external graphics is a brand new thing. Mm -hmm. The other products that we have in our line have been around, we've been doing this for six years, so we have a whole range of uh, Thunderbolt to PCI card expansion chassis. Mm -hmm starting with the other single slot chassis that are much smaller. They're kind of form fit to the type of card, uh, minimizing you know, the desktop footprint. So we have the SEL, that's for network interface cards, like 10 gigabit ethernet cards and fiber yep. channel cards. Some video <coughs> IO cards, uh, 4K video cards, <coughs> excuse me, uh, are supported as well because they're low profile cards. So it's all low profile cards that are Thunderbolt compatible will fit. Then we, the next one up is the SC1, which supports um, like video I.O. cards such as from Blackmagic and AJA yep. and Bluefish 444. But they're all sort of, they're all interface based cards rather than the GPU, ones right. like this. Yes. So, so what's enabled these to be made? Well, uh, so the, the idea of Thunderbolt compatibility comes into play. Mm -hmm. It's always been a requirement established early on by Intel with the tight cooperation of Apple that any Thunderbolt device needs to hot plug and, and surprise disconnect without problems. Mm -hmm. No computer crashing, always recognizing the device, et cetera. And that's, so any device that says it's Thunderbolt compatible has to do that. Uh, an expansion chassis with a card in it needs to perform the same way. So we, ha we maintain a list of uh, Thunderbolt compatible PCIe cards in all categories on our website, linkable from any of our expansion okay. chassis pages. So I'll link to that in the <coughs> description below. Yes. In the case of GPUs, it's always been conspicuously absent. Okay. Uh, it hasn't been possible to um, hot plug, uh, create a driver, there haven't been any available uh, until just recently. Uh, first has happened on Windows. So Thunderbolt 3 for Windows compatibility uh, brought the cooperation uh, and kind of joint effort between Intel and AMD first. Uh, AMD calls their special drivers for their GPU cards X-Connect and uh, then NVIDIA followed closely uh, behind that for a range of their PCIe cards. And what they're doing in essence is making um, hot plugability possible with a very complex operation. And what that mm -hmm. basically boils down to is when you plug a chassis with a GPU card in it, or when you plug our puck in with a GPU card in it, it handshakes with the computer, uh, the, which is all, already get, has a, a, a graphics processor running yeah. in the computer. And um, it takes over the responsibility. So the internal GPU in essence shuts down and the external GPU takes over. So do these entirely take over and the other ones are just sitting there doing nothing mm -hmm. or do they hot swap a little bit and take on different tasks? It takes over completely. It takes over completely, okay. And the even more tricky software engineering is when you hot disconnect 
and it automatically snaps back to the internal processor taking over operations without crashing your computer. Mm. So it was um, a challenging thing to do uh, for them, and uh, but it's working. So Windows computers today uh, that have Thunderbolt 3, I highly recommend ones with KB Lake uh, processors and at least a core i7 and 16 mm -hmm. gigabytes of RAM, uh, which can be even really uh, thin and light ultrabooks. Mm. Um, fit so into that the category. Processor power is there. Yeah, just just that much, not more needed uh, mm -hmm. necessarily. And you plug in external graphics. You could put a Titan X in there, and suddenly um, bring all that power to bear on that computer. So if I'm choosing a computer from scratch, so I say I'm on. If we go into the Mac world, just because it's what I know slightly more, you go in and I'm buying a new MacBook Pro. You can choose your processor, choose max that out. If you're choosing your video card, I could go potentially for the lowest graphics card in there, knowing that whenever I'm going to do any serious editing, I'm going to plug in something like this, or any color grading, I'm going to plug in something like this. And this graphics card, which I choose, which I can put in here, and I can, more importantly, update as time goes on and as new technologies come out, I can update the one in here, and that will completely take over from the maybe slightly subpar one in my actual laptop. Correct. That's right. That's right. Cool. So that, that, that really does add some flexibility, doesn't it? Yeah. So, right. you know, on set, you can conceivably uh, do some very sophisticated um, color grading work mm. uh, with a Titan X in the EGFX breakaway box plugged into your, you know, when the compatibility exists, MacBook Pro, since you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'd like, we can talk about Thunderbolt compatibility yeah, let, let's. for Mac. Uh, so. Uh, Currently, with the Mac OS Sierra, there are no officially Thunderbolt compatible drivers available, but it can still run if, um, with the proper, what people like to call it, hack, mm -hmm. which basically kind of tricks the OS into believing that the driver, uh, and NVIDIA did make uh, its um, Pascal family of, of GPU cards, which goes from the 1050, 1060, 70, 80, 80 Ti, and Titan X, uh, available in a beta form for um, Mac OS. Uh, AMD has uh, drivers as well. You can even work with Thunderbolt 2 computers and a mm -hmm. Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. The, the, it's just there's a little hack that you do to trick the OS into believing that it's Thunderbolt compatible and then... What form does that hack take? Is it software or is it it's a little, boot sequence? It's a, little, it's a little ID that gets inserted into the driver okay. that says I'm Thunderbolt compatible. Right. It's a KEX file. And there's routines that are downloadable to do that. You have to unlock system security preference to do it first. There's descriptions of how to do that. We don't support it, but it's done. Okay, fine. Um, and uh, many people are happy doing it. It's not hot pluggability yet. Yep. And it's not... Um, it's not uh, able to display the accelerated graphics onto the, for example, MacBook Pro's main screen, uh, but it does work in terms of harnessing the GPU power if that's what you choose to do. Something. But the exciting news mm -hmm. is that um, on June 5th at the Apple Developer Conference, Apple introduced uh, that in the next version of the OS, High Sierra, mm -hmm. they'll be supporting external graphics in the right way, complete hot right. pluggability. And they, so all of a sudden, products like this become very important. Very important. Uh, in fact, they have seeded uh, developers uh, so that they can make sure that they bring their uh, applications to the Mac if they aren't already on the Mac, or they can uh, properly um, support external graphics. Um, they've seeded them with the developer kit. They're actually using our breakaway box in that kit, along with the uh, AMD 580 uh, graphics card. And they're also including a little Belkin um, four-port hub. So once um, High Sierra is finished, and actually they just started a public beta, so the public can download that and start to experiment with that. Um, the uh, once it's finished, uh, then um, it'll be completely hot pluggable. Whatever graphics card you want, whether it's from AMD or from Nvidia, if it's in the range of ones that they've chosen to. Uh, provide Thunderbolt driver support for. So right now for NVIDIA, it's up to, on the Windows side, and it'll be eventually the same on the Mac side, up to the Titan X. 
and some older uh, GPU cards as well. And then on the AMD side, older GPU cards and up to the 580 uh, today. So once that hot swap ability is there with High Sierra, presumably that just means that you can have one of these set up with your graphics card of choice and just plug it in and out of any computer yeah. that's on and just, right, I'm on my Mac now, MacBook now, so I'm plugging it into that, supercharged into my iMac for desktop and everything. Like, yes. It's literally as simple as that, unplugging it, yep. plugging it in. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, and th these are bigger chassis. We, we, we have this product a little bit bigger than our other chassis, A, for the, to be able to support the full range of GPU cards. Because mm, they vary in size, don't they? B, to support a variety of sizes of power supplies. Mm -hmm. And C, because it allows us to make it a much quieter, quieter enclosure. Because of more airflow? Yeah, more airflow that's not restricted. Okay. When you start restricting airflow, it you know tends to make noise. Yeah, and so um, and also we can support the water cooled uh, uh, GPU cards, which make it even quieter. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but it's it's still transportable. It's quite light. Uh, mm. you no, can, it is very light. You can um, you can put it in a typical camera bag mm -hmm. and just tote it around with the. Uh, uh, to to your location, and uh, now you've got the ability to support Adobe Premiere. You've got you know Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and all s manner of software that wants mm -hmm. to use a GPU for its CUDA core or Open uh, CL um, access to processing. Cool. Okay. So, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, so let me know what you think of these in the comments section. Really looking forward to seeing what you guys think and I'll see you in the next video.